Pop artist stories from the 70s. And the story today has to do with Alpine Valley, Wisconsin, Nashville. That's where my friend Jerry James Nichols is all about it because you are a Wisconsin native, my friend. And not only are you a Wisconsin native, but you live right by Alpine Valley. Like it's the it's like one of the biggest move out or outdoor music venues in the Midwest, especially close to Chicago. Um, and you are playing a show here in Chicago, the 26th at the Beat Kitchen. How are you, sir? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> Thanks for your time. This is great. Uh, yeah, uh, East Troy boy. So Wisconsin born and raised <laughs> right next to Alpine and uh, excited to come to Chicago and rock and roll. Yeah, we were talking earlier and, uh, and thank you for getting up early. I know you were rehearsing late last night and you hit the All gym good. this morning. You're a little spelt, my friend. You, uh, you're not I, messing around in the gym. I'll tell you what, dude, I got this nice shirt. It, it's a nice accentuation. And I'm looking at myself and I'm like, I need to like button up. I look too crazy. <laughs> nah, it's good. We're talking rock and roll. You know, what the hell? It's fine. Come on. Uh, um, so you're playing, you, you said that you haven't played much in Chicago. This is probably your first like headlining tour. You're at the Beat Kitchen. So folks who know Beat Kitchen, awesome venue. It really is. It's a lot of fun. But tell people about yourself. Uh, and then we're going to get into a little bit of the what it was like to grow up near a music venue conversation. But first, talk about your music because you've like sat in or you've helped out. You were mentioning earlier Black Label Society. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you played with Slash. Like, yeah, man. Come, like, that's like a guitar god, man. <laughs> and then, you know, even Zach Wilde, same thing, guitar god. So uh, yeah. how did that all happen for you? Uh, well, I've been super, super lucky. So uh, growing up in Wisconsin, um, you know, I grew up in the country, so it was like sports. And then when I was like 15, 16, I, I found music through friends. I originally wanted to be a drummer, but it was too loud for my, my parents. My dad's like, no way you're playing the drums. So I got <laughs> Don't <a> we all? <laughs> yeah. So I got a guitar and I just fell in love with it. Um, so I started actually, funny enough, um, going to like open jams, like my parents would take me. So like we would go to Rockford and we would go to Beloit. Um... And, Rockford. Yeah, of course. And up yeah. to Milwaukee. Yeah, I even I even went to Chicago. I went to Buddy Guys, and that was really cool. And um, great venue. Great venue. So I remember um, you know, growing up, I loving the blues, loving rock and roll. And when I was 17, I was playing so much guitar that I actually got a scholarship to go to a school in Boston called Berkeley, Berkeley College of Music. Yeah, so, I've heard of that one. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's not I, a small I, feat, my friend. That's a that's an honor. Yeah, so it was two years after playing. I, I started to go there, and um, I didn't last long because I was so passionate about playing. And when I got there, I was learning how to read music. Man, I was learning how to conduct there. So it like, I was sitting there. I'm like wanting to play guitar, and I'm going, "What am I doing?" So <laughs> I ended up. Uh, my parents were mortified but I said I want to move to Los Angeles because I hear that's a really really awesome place to make it right sure. so I moved to Los Angeles when I was 21 and uh immediately hit the ground running I started um my own trio basically I sing I play the guitar and it's the music ever since the beginning was kind of like the music I grew up loved listening to you know everything from like blues rock stuff like Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin but even up to more contemporary stuff you know if if you're a fan of Alice in Chains or you're a fan sure. of even Queens of the Stone Age and stuff like that. So I have, uh, I worked my way up the ranks and um, yeah, I just, tour I've been lucky. One of my first biggest tours was supporting Leonard Skinner across Europe. And then after that, I. Dude, that's another like going. hall of famers there. Come on. That's a, that's a huge honor. Yeah, dude. So it was like, I did the Skinner tour. Then I went out with uh, the guys from Deep Purple and then I went out with ZZ Top and then I got to go out with uh, Zach Wilde and Black Label Society and Blue Oyster Cult. And all of these tours started happening. I kept, I just didn't say no. And um, I formed an alliance with Gibson Guitars. I've released two signature guitars with them, with a third on the way. And um, yeah, it's great. I just released this record. Um, it's self-titled. And right. it, came, it came out on the 13th, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, that's available now. So if anyone is going... Who is this guy and why do I care? Go check out the record. You might <laughs> dig it. And uh, I'm really proud of it. And I'm really excited, like I said, to come to Chicago and rock. Yeah, you mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, your your influences and, and you are ambassador for uh, Gibson. 
And I feel like, uh, especially right now, we need people to still want to play rock and roll and play it well and play it with a little bit of swagger versus, you know, there's this music out there that, you know, it's, you know, every mainstream music cycles, right? You know, you, sometimes it's this, sometimes it's that. And, uh, you know, rock music has certainly had lots of time in that mainstream. You were talking about like, even like Alice in Chains, part of that movement and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it feels like in the last, I don't know, few years where it's kind of just taken, a, you know, maybe stepped out a little bit just and regrouping and reforming to figure out this new punch to get back right. into the mainstream. But I feel like that's been lacking. And it's nice to hear somebody who's a younger, who grew up, you know, re and respecting some bands that kind of paved the way for every band or right. every band that certainly plays guitar and drums, right? So uh, has that been a tough road though, just with the, the music industry, just bouncing down, you know, up and down in terms of main, you know, rock music versus like pop music and stuff like that? Absolutely. Well, the, the first thing too is, you know, even like, before we even dig into that, like <laughs> thinking about playing rock music in now it's 2023, right? Yeah. So, so it's, it's kind of funny because I feel like we're probably near the same age, but you know, growing up, especially in the Midwest, um, I was hearing everything from classic rock radio, you know, like I would hear Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and all this great stuff, Dire Straits. Right. Yeah. And then growing up hearing Alice in Chains and Soundgarden, even into like, corn and limp biscuit and oh slippers. yeah <laughs> so it's like i can't um pretend like a lot of people go oh you know maybe some things are uh too modern or like you know it's like we grew up in a time where all of that music happened so like that i'm influenced by all of that and what's really funny now about it is like you said i feel like rock and roll especially in the focus of mainstream it comes in waves it's almost as if there's like a resurgence. I feel like it's like a pendulum swings. Absolutely. Like, That's I've always felt that way. Yeah. Yeah. And then all it takes is a little spark to create that fire that ignites it again. And it's really, really cool right now because I do feel like there's a lot of great rock and roll being made. And for me, you know, maybe, maybe it's just because I love it so much, but I do feel like the energy for rock is really swinging in a positive direction. So when I made this record, that's what I went in feeling. I, I went, I didn't go in saying, you know, like, cause there's a lot of people that would go, oh man, you know, rock and roll. It's not the, the hippest thing right now we should be doing right. like this or, you know, try and chase whatever it is. But when we made this record, we went in with the fact like, no, we love it. We are really excited for the, the sound, the direction of this album and just rock and roll right now in a whole. So it felt really good. And to your point, keeping that music alive and not only alive in a way like, oh, nostalgic, like I remember this, but alive in a way where it's like, man, I love this song. I love this style. And, you know, rock and roll isn't just a throwback. It's something that still is relevant today. Hell yeah, it's relevant today. I mean, I'll quote a band, one of my favorite bands, you know, rock and roll ain't no noise pollution and it's never gonna die, right? ACDC. Man, I, so the other day I went to this school to um, give, it was a school of the arts to give like a guitar lesson. Cause I do a lot of that kind of stuff where, you know, I'll do like clinics and, you know, for showing kids playing guitar. That's awesome. These kids, man. I mean, they were from anywhere from like 12 to like 18. Right. All right. I played that riff. I said, can anyone name this riff? I'm going to give you a free t-shirt. I played <laughs> bam, 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 bam. every kid in that room, I swear, hand right up. So really, I swear it. And, you know, of course, this is like a school of the arts. So they're they're dialed in. But the excitement for rock and roll on these kids faces, like instantly, like supercharged me where I was like, wow, man, like, see this, it, it, it made me feel good because, you know, you and I can sit here and go, oh, man, it's, you know, we can say what we believe, but then when you see it in action, you're like, yes. Yeah, I mean, that is right what you just said. That's what rock and roll is supposed to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what a lot of music doesn't do. You know, a lot of the mainstream music, you know, yeah, I'll make you dance, you know, but then you forget about it in a couple of years. 
I mean, that song we just talked about is 43 years old. You know what it's I mean? And, yeah. Like what? How did that happen? First of all, 43 years ago, but, and it was the second damn singer of the band. You know what I mean? It's like, nuts. And, <laughs> but that's, yeah. I, it's crazy. Cause also, like you said, like a lot of this music is from so long ago before you and I were born. So that just shows you how good it is and how timeless it is. And like, not to be like digging deep, but like rock and roll as an art form, right? Yeah. It has roots in every style of music that came before it, that I feel like it truly is like the people's music because there's something in there for everyone. Even if you're like, oh, I don't like loud, heavy music. It's like, well, there's a lot of great rock and roll that's really nice. And you know what I mean? There's so many shades of it. And that's Absolutely. the part. I feel like that's actually, if you saw that new Elvis movie that was out, you kind of yeah. see a little bit of that. That's like the birth of rock and roll or part of the birth of rock and roll, you know? And it's all that different music. And it just takes that one conduit to really showcase the world, that spark you were talking about. Absolutely. And you can, yeah, and it's reflected. I feel like when you know rock music is at a low, let's say versus a high, you can just see it based on like the festivals where mm -hmm. you look at the headliners and you're like, you know, some of those band, like, uh, you know, They'll have like, let's say Metallica and then a bunch of bands you've never heard of versus like maybe oh. 15 years ago, it was, you know, Metallica, Green Day, Foo Fight, you know, and all, they were still like putting out music regularly. So it's just like when you start seeing a little bit of more of those bands start trickling, bands like yourself start right. becoming part of the touring lexicon that is music, uh, you, you get excited about it. And I got to imagine growing up near Alpine Valley, you said you like were on the same street as Alpine Valley up in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Legit, uh, 990 Highway D, that's my parents' address. So it's, it's <laughs> right down the road, man. I mean, same street, everything. We'd walk from there to the concerts. That had to be influential, just hearing every band that's, that played there, good, bad, or ugly, you heard them, you know, and you were selling, yeah, oh, you said yeah. you were selling like, what, well, like water outside your street, like, uh, yeah. you know, as people are going to the show? So, so it's in the country, it's in the cornfields, right? Yeah. So, um, I remember like, like I was telling you my earliest memories of like Alpine and shows were when like um, Fish or String Cheese Incident or Grateful Dead, these bands yeah. would come through Pearl Jam. And the lines would be so long that I was a little kid, but I was like, man, you know, people would walk up to the door and be like, hey, can we use your bathroom? And, or, hey, do you have some water? <laughs> so me being like a little entrepreneur, I was like, we should sell water. Yeah, so like yeah. I started selling water. I remember it was like, 50 cents of water or something. And I had a cooler water, sold it out in like three minutes. But man, these cars would be lined up for miles. So like, I would see these people too. And being a little kid, I'd see like, you know, deadheads. And I'd be like, whoa, like, who are these people? Like, you know, where did you go? Well, yeah, especially in, being in the Midwest when all of a sudden you're like, what is going on? And, you know, not to, not to be a, uh, not to be a, uh, whatever, but like, you know, I was from, East Troy, I, you know, like I never saw someone with dreadlocks all the way down to their ankles. Right. And, you know, like, I was like, wow. Like, you know, like, I, I feel like I found my first taste of like culture, like with those shows. And then I even like Zach Wild, right. He's like one of my best friends now. And it, I told him, I said, Zach, I remember being 13 years old, watching you play there. And me and my friends showed up so early that like the first hundred people got like pit passes. So they were like, nice. hey, you guys get these wristbands. And we're like, what does this mean? And they're like, oh, you get to go right to the front of the stage because you're the first ones here. So I said to him, I remember being like 13 years old, watching you with Ozzy, literally being scared of you because you looked like a crazy Viking. And he was, you know, drinking beer and spitting it everywhere and everything. But he's like, are you serious? I was like, yeah, dude, some of my first memories were from that venue watching you and, you know, so many others. And that was like my first taste of music and schooling. That is unbelievable. And though, and he was good, you know, like a good showman up on stage so much that you remember. And now it's absolutely insane that you're now besties with him. You've played with him on stage professionally. Yeah. I mean, that's just outstanding. And that goes without, I, I was reading it with your, in your bio that something happened with your, your arm, was it? That oh, where yeah, you yeah. almost stopped playing music altogether or at least performing it on stage. Yeah, so actually that was kind of a stunner because um, we were on tour. This would have been in October of, tw I gotta remember what year it is, October of 2021. Um, 
I was actually lifting a case, man. And I had some serious fatigue going on in my arm. I thought I had tennis elbow or something happening. Mm -hmm. I was having a lot of pains in my arm and we got off stage. I was feeling great. You're going to laugh at this story. Actually. Imagine this crazy long haired guy shirtless, just getting his gear off the stage with the guys. Right. (laughs) I mean, I look like if you didn't see me like at a stage, you'd be like, who's this crazy hobo, right? So <laughs> I'm pulling my stuff off the stage. I go to grab it at the handle of an amp. Like it was, it was kind of heavy, but, and I, I hear a little over the oh, music. No. Like, you know, like when you stand up in your leg, you think you got a cramp or something. Uh huh. I thought that happened to my elbow. And I was like, oh. and I walk up to my drummer. I'm like, Dennis, I think I just like pulled out my elbow and I'm kind of rubbing my arm. And he was like, so we go up to our tour manager, who's like this old school, like medic, you know, army guy. And he's like, you just don't pull your elbow. So I'm like, okay, what do you think happened? He goes, I think you tore your bicep or something. I said, no, I, oh, heard, sh- I heard a pop. So we yeah, go to, a, to an ER and it turns out that I chipped a little piece off of the bone. It was like a, a stress fractures on my, on the bone and a little piece chipped off. How does that even happen? I know. So check this out. So on, on the x-ray, you can see on my arm, these little like serrated edges on the bone. So it's oh, on this no. side too. It's kind of, kind of weird. I don't know if it's, um, it could have been contributed through growth and just fatigue of just, I don't know, whatever, but what ended up happening, I was like, okay, cool. Just tape it up. It'll be fine. Yeah, they're like, sure. They're like, no, dude, I'm in Florida. They're like, you need to have a surgery to get this fixed right now. We can't leave the chip of the bone in your body. It could, it could go in your blood, blah, blah, blah. So instantly as a guitar player, right? You sit there and you go, okay, like I need these. Yeah, sure. Picking it. I don't use a pick when I play either. I use my fingers, right? Um, it's a long story, but uh, <laughs> I was sitting there going, okay, am I going to be able to play again? Like, am I going to, what's going to happen now? Because they said I could have some nerve damage because there's a lot of nerves. Oh, that gosh. Your arm yeah, I, like... I remember getting the surgery and waking up and the doctor goes, hey, and he kind of like slaps my face. I'm like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, it went really good. He's like, do me a favor. And I'm, you know, totally drugged up. He goes, can you move your fingers? And I go like this, man, I go. Just like the, the slightest amount. And I remember like right away, I told my, uh, my friend was at the hospital and I was like, go get my guitar. And I straight up, man, I'll, I'll like grab a guitar just to show you. Like I straight up was going like this, like with the guitar. I was just going like. Yeah, basically starting all over again. Trying to start over just to, yeah. You know. So I use my, my fingers, right? So, so it's, a, it's a different style. But anyways, yeah. I need these fingers, man. So absolutely. It was a shock. It was a scare. But thankfully. I, I, I just said to myself, I was like, man, you can't let this take you down. You've gone too far now. So thankfully I'm good now. And you ever seen that movie rookie of the year? Yeah, dude, this arm now it's like super strong. It's got like a little plate in it. Nice. It's weird. So like, even now, sometimes like I'll be playing and I'll be hitting it too hard. And I'm like, slow down. (laughs) Ah, there is validity to that. Huh? When they tighten it up like that. Uh, now I'm, I'm truly metal, man. You know what I mean? Got a plate and some screws. Nice. So <laughs> you're here on, uh, the 26th of January and, uh, the beat kitchen and, and you're on a tour. Where can people find out information about you? If they want to read about you and see you maybe perhaps in different spots around the country. Yeah. So, um, the easiest is if you like, if you want to go to my website, which is just jaredjamesnichols.com, but also if anyone's on social media, whether it's Facebook Instagram, Twitter, all of those things, all of that stuff is posted all over there. And um, if you want to just check out more even about like my sound or anything, if, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, I always post little jam videos and stuff. So you can hear where, you know, even if you're just like, I just got to get a taste of what this guy's all about. You can go there and check that out. And that all lives online. And um, yeah, it's just jaredjamesnichols.com. Yeah. And, and, you know, wanting to know what you're all about. I mean, classic rock magazines talked about you, Apple music's new and rock. I mean, you having some huge uh, spotlight shine shown upon you. So, I mean, kudos to you, man, for uh, Thanks, really man. just a, sticking to your path. It's been a great week. I mean, it's, it's one of those things too, where, you know, it's like anything in life, you work towards a goal for so long and then um, 
you start to get that validity and it just feels good. And it feels it for rock and roll. It feels good for everything. You know what I mean? Heck yeah. And hopefully you'll be uh, one of those bands that a kid hears outside of a music venue where, uh, you know, that you see the long line of cars, including the tour bus that's driving by. And that's, and that's your, and your tour bus. I'll tell you what, man, every single show that, or clinic or whatever I do. And I see like the kids, I, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's like, I see myself those years ago and I make sure to give them the time of day and say, Hey man, you know, come on over, Jan you know, whatever. And, uh, that's all I want to do, man. Inspire and make great music. That's awesome, man. It's been a pleasure talking with you this morning. I didn't know what uh, to expect. 8.30, you usually don't do band interviews at 8.30, but you were up <laughs> early. You, play, you you practiced the night before, and you were up early. You already got your workout in. We're thank good, you man. very much, man. I appreciate it. Jerry James Nichols, thank you. Thanks for everything, dude. And uh, um, Chicago, I'm ready to rock. Let's do it.